The European Court of Human Rights has declared the Azerbaijani citizen's complaint against Armenia unacceptable. The applicant claimed he had a property in the territory of Kalbajar but had to abandon it in 1993. He had submitted a complaint in 2008, over six years after Armenia ratified the European Convention of Human Rights. Moreover, more than 15 years had passed since compulsory displacement from the house that allegedly belonged to the applicant by right of ownership. Thus, the European Court of Human Rights deemed submission of the complaint to be too late. The Armenian opposition has scheduled a nationwide rally for Saturday. All the opposition structures urge the people to unite and participate in the actions. According to the representatives, this rally will be one of the most major rallies in Armenia. Meanwhile, they noted that following Saturday, new waves of disobedience will take place in Armenia. Armenia has received over 184 tons of humanitarian aid through Hayastan All-Armenian Fund since the first days of the war in Artsakh. Armenia continues to receive humanitarian cargo and currently 63,015 kilograms of cargo received from Los Angeles between January 22nd and February 4th is stored due to customs clearance and classification. Russian and Turkish presidents Vladimir Putin and Recep Erdogan discussed by phone the implementation of Nagorno-Karabakh agreements. The two discussed the coordination of the Russian and Turkish actions over the socio-economic development of the region. Moody's Investor Service has reaffirmed the VA2 stable rating of the electric networks of Armenia, and this time for a long period. The company's rating is unprecedented in Armenia and the region. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic and war consequences, the rating has been reaffirmed, taking into consideration positive factors. A total of 191 new cases of coronavirus were reported in Armenia, bringing the total number to 170,011. A total of 4,266 people are currently being treated, while 161,790 people have already recovered. The death toll has reached 3,158. Georgia's ruling party has nominated leader of the political party, Irakli Garibashvili, for prime minister of the country, Georgia News reports. Garibashvili currently holds the post of defense minister, and if elected by the parliament, he will become prime minister for the second time in his political career. 